Welcome back. I'm Gus. I'm an editor, an animator, and a visual effects artist. Welcome to episode 10 of Brick Film School, the series where I teach you how to get started on your filmmaking journey. Today we'll be covering brick lights and showing the advantages they have over your standard desk lamps. And I'm excited to announce this video is sponsored by Game of Bricks. How about that? Episode 10 of Brick Film School coming in with our very first sponsor. Follow the link in the description and use the promo code OnBeatMan15 at checkout to receive 15% off your purchase. I asked if Game of Bricks could send along an inexpensive set so I could show you what you really get if you're trying to just get started uh, with brick lights for LEGO films, mocks, or whatever you would like. Now, like with anything else, these aren't a requirement to get started in animation. I've been animating for years and I just recently jumped into this realm a few months ago. But if it's something you're looking to jump into now or soon, I definitely recommend it. It really does expand what you can do with lighting for your films and your sets. Also, full disclosure, I was not told to say anything about this product they sent me. They just sent along this set to see what I thought and I wanted to share the advantages I found with you. If you enjoy or learn anything from this video, click that like button and consider subscribing. I upload just about every single week, so you're not gonna wanna miss it. Also, if you're starting to get jazzed about The Mandalorian Season 2, be sure to check out my Mandalorian film, The Last Bounty Hunter. It's one of my favorite projects I've worked on, so if you're interested, be sure to give it a watch. Brick lights. Brick lights are tiny LEDs that are meant for LEGO integration. They're packaged to work with specific LEGO sets, but you can really use them however you'd like. The advantages these pose over your standard desk lamps is you can really make your films feel a lot more cinematic by positioning your lights in your scene or in your foreground, background, wherever. And with them being the scale of minifigures, it gives you this whole other cinematic quality. The light effects really do reflect live action on set lighting. While desk lamps give you large washes of light that are often and difficult to control. The interrogator is a great example of the advantages posed by these lights, as I wouldn't have been able to light the scene in this way without the use of brick lights. This shadow pattern wouldn't have been as crisp with a desk lamp, and this Lego lamp wouldn't have been possible at all. When it comes to brick lights, it really is about having full control over your set's lighting, the same way you would on a Hollywood production. What do you actually get? My biggest hesitation with jumping into brick lighting was what am I actually getting for my money and will they actually work with my animation? So I really wanted to show you what an inexpensive set gets you to really answer all those questions that I had. And now after using them for a few videos, I can tell you that these lights are extremely stable and I haven't had any light flicker problems of any kind. And also none of my lights have broken or burned out and I've been using them for months now. This light kit I'll be showing you today is packaged for the Volkswagen T1 camper van set. I thought this set had a good variety of white and warm white lights, which is the most useful for my animation needs. So here's the box you receive. It opens very much like an Apple product, which is nice. And inside the kit, you have these bags. So there you have it, bag one, we have four lights. Bag two, we have three lights and an extension cable. Bag three, we have three more lights. Bag four is our power. And then we also have a little power bank that we can plug uh, our lights into. Bag five, we have light strips. And then we have some more extension cables. That's what the black cables are. And then this extra bag is uh, set specific, just bricks to use. And uh, Game of Bricks has instructions on their site in case you want to use these in the set that they're packed for. And then you have your power supply. I'll just start by putting my AAAs in this power bank. Now, when you're working in animation, I don't usually like to rely on batteries, so you can actually plug this into a standard wall power brick. And I just use a standard extension cord with the power brick. Then I just plug this right into wall power, and then the wall power just maintains consistency. Batteries sometimes get dimmer over time because they lose their charge, so that's why I've just done this for my animation. For the interrogator, I used a total of six brick lights and no desk lamps. For a more standard video, like the Stormtrooper Sharpshooter, I used about three brick lights at a given time, and then desk lamps for uh, my primary light source. So you can mix and match however works for you. So you can see these sets have a decent variety, even at this entry level. And you can choose what works best for you and your budget. Using the lights. Now it's time to see them in action. So here you can see our power strip. Everything's gonna plug into this so everything can be supplied with power. You can take off these coverings so that you have access to the outlets there. We're gonna take off some on each side so we can plug power into one side and then the lights into another. 
We're gonna take from bag one, these are just some white lights. And we're gonna take from bag five, a uh, light strip and an extension cable. This extension cable is gonna plug into uh, the very end there. And then I'm going to plug in a strip light. And you can see that gives you, you know, more light to work with. That's just standard white or a warm white, technically. So then we're gonna take off a few more of these covers to give us more outlets to work with. Then I'm gonna plug in another white light. This is just a single light. Um, there's a nice variety of these in this kit, maybe about uh, five or so. I'm gonna plug in another one. So now we have two white lights. Again, warm white is what we're working with here, how they work right there. And we're gonna take from bag two. This is actually a blue light and there are two red lights in that bag as well. This is just to give you a little bit of variety. That's kind of what I like about this light kit. It has a nice variety of lights to work with. Um, if you want other colors of light, you just put a white light behind, you know, a tinted Lego brick. So this, you can see, is a scene that is lit with just desk lamps. And there, this is what the brick lights can do. It really gives you another level of separation between the foreground and background. This. While it looks good, it's a completely different feel. It's bigger lights, and then and then this with the brick lights just has another level of dimension and cinematic quality to it. We're using all four lights we just plugged in uh, to light this scene right now. I really do enjoy this kind of versatility that these lights provide over the desk lamps because the desk lamps like really work with larger washes. You can see here how everything's kind of plugged in. Everything's held in place with Lego bricks, as you can see. They're just kind of haphazardly laid around the set because everything with film only needs to look neat in the frame. If you're making a mock or incorporating these in the set they're made for, uh, you can obviously hide them, make them look really nice and sleek and hidden. But for the cinematography I use them for, this is perfectly acceptable because in the shot, you don't see them and it gives you that very cinematic light. And now it's time for the Q&A portion of this video, brought to you live from your local Instagram. Are brick lights easy to break? Have you broken any? I have not broken any, but I would be gentle with them because they're very tiny. Aren't they a little bit too bright for Lego scale? Actually, they're a great brightness. Uh, you see mock builders using these all the time. And if you want to learn how to set your camera to work with any lighting you have, you can check out my last Brick Film School on camera settings. How can you make a lens flare using them or more cinematic lighting? How do you make them look natural and fit into the scene? For making them look natural in the scene, that really just comes with just playing with them and trying to see what feels right to you. And when it comes to lens flares, I usually add specific lens flares in the computer because sometimes with animation, having in-camera lens flares can be tricky, especially if you need to do some special stabilization or any post work on your animation, which I often have to do. Do you need other lights when using brick lights or are they enough? I found them to be enough for what I needed. If you are looking for very bright rooms and stuff like that, I would recommend desk lamps, like or especially daytime scenes. Of course you'd need desk lamps. But you can kind of see in the interrogator or stormtrooper sharpshooter kind of two different ways to work with them uh, one in a brighter sense with like only one desk lamp enhancing the scene and then in the interrogator no desk lamps and only the brick lights and that'll do it for the q a portion of this video if you want to be a part of the next one follow me on instagram also this is not the only time i'll cover brick lights so if you have more questions comment those below and never fear i'll be back and there you go, I hope this video was helpful for you and maybe taught you a thing or two about the world of brick lights. Click the link in the description to check out gameofbricks.eu and use the promo code ONBEATMAN15 to receive 15% off your purchase. If you have any further questions on this series or know what you want to see next, comment that below. See you next Saturday, on to the next one.